Hello and welcome to the virtual open house for the Bruce Vento Regional Trail Extension from Whitaker Street to County Road J. Thank you for joining us for this virtual meeting. On today's call, we have representatives from the Ramsey County Parks and Recreation Department, the City of White Bear Lake, White Bear Township, White Bear Lake Area School District, and members of the SRF consulting team. For today's presentation, we wanted to provide a little bit of an orientation of how we will facilitate the conversation. Um, during the presentation, attendees will be on mute and their camera will be disabled. Please note that the chat function is disabled and we encourage you to use the Q&A box to share any of your comments and thoughts for discussion after the presentation. Um, as the conversation unfolds, please continue to raise your hand or submit additional comments um, in that Q&A function so that we can continue the conversation. Um, and while many of you may be used to a virtual meeting setting like this, please bear with us if any technical difficulties arise. Uh, before opening up the presentation, I'll provide a few more instructions on how you can participate with us during the meeting. Um, there are two options for you to provide your comments or to ask questions as part of this conversation. You can use the raise hand function at the bottom of your screen to indicate that you would like to be acknowledged for a question or comment after the presentation. During the presentation, if questions arise or you have comments you'd like to make, please use that Q&A box to type any thoughts or comments you have. That'll allow us to, um, to continue to take questions in the order they're received. Please note that if you do raise your hand, you'll be recognized and acknowledged for up to two minutes of open mic. We ask that you be respectful during this time. If you're calling in, you have the option to hit star nine on your phone to raise your hand, indicating that you'd like to be acknowledged. You can then hit star six to unmute yourself. Um, we'll return to these instructions at the end of the presentation when we open it up for a Q&A. But now I will turn it over to Scott Yonke from the Ramsey County Parks and Recreation Department to begin the presentation. Hi everyone, my name is Scott Yonke. I'm the Planning and Development Director with Ramsey County Parks. And uh, thank you for uh, attending the, the first open house session today for the phase two Bruce Vento Regional Trail design project. So uh, this, this project is very important to the county and it is a, an important community asset and to uh, uh, public within uh, the small local area within White Bear Lake and White Bear Township and adjacent areas, as well as in, within a regional context as well. The entire Bruce Vento Regional Trail, uh, it extends 13.3 miles. So it starts in downtown St. Paul and it goes all the way up to County Road J, which is the Northern County line. So that is the whole context of the Bruce Vento Regional Trail project. But this phase two design project is specifically in between Whitaker Street and County Road J. Next slide, please. So I just wanted to provide a little bit of overview on this project. So as I mentioned earlier, the phase two extension, it's approximately 3.5 miles uh, in length and extends from Whitaker Street to County Road J. And it goes through White Bear Lake and White Bear Township. The, the phase two extension, it will connect into the previously phase one extension. So phase one was started back in 2018 and that extends basically from Berkeley Road up to the intersection of Hoffman and Highway 61. Um, and then, so the phase two component will extend north from Whitaker Street up to County Road J. Uh, the, this, this new trail connection will, will provide uh, many benefits to residents and businesses in the adjacent neighborhoods while also drawing new audiences to the trail system in whole. Next slide, please. I just wanted to go briefly go over some project history uh, regarding the Bruce Vento Regional Trail. So back in 1993, the original master plan for the Bruce Vento Regional Trail was completed. Uh, 2018 through 2019, Ramsey County initiated three design projects for the Bruce Vento Regional Trail. So phase one trail design that was for Berkeley Road up to the intersection of Hoffman and Highway 61. 
We also launched a feasibility study to evaluate alternate trail corridor alignments for the phase two section trail between Whitaker and County Road J. And then additionally, we also initiated a master plan amendment for the Bruce Vento Regional Trail. In 2020, the preferred alignment for the phase two of the Bruce Vento Regional Trail was determined. And additionally, within 2020, Ramsey County uh, prepared a draft master plan amendment for long-term improvements to the Bruce Vento Regional Trail. In November, 2020, an RFP for the phase two pre-design was submitted to bring a consultant on board. Uh, January, 2021, the phase two pre-design uh, begun. And uh, May, 2021, uh, the draft amendment was approved by the Ramsey County Board of Commissioners. Uh, additionally, within May, uh, the draft master plan amendment was also submitted to the Metropolitan Council. And uh, the Metropolitan Council uh, will be reviewing and uh, looking at approving the master plan within the August timeframe of this year. Next, next slide, please. Some of the overall project goals uh, for the phase two design project, we'd like to provide trail connections to the Rush Line BRT, downtown White Bear Lake and other trail systems, prepare final design and construction and future uh, construction plans and future grant requests, conduct community engagement to gather uh, long-term trail improvement needs. Uh, we'd like to design high quality community spaces for all people, all ages and all abilities. And additionally, we'd like to provide a regional trail facility amenities and components that incorporate sustainability and green infrastructure for long-term resiliency. Next slide. As you can see on the screen right here, uh, the, the map shows the preferred alignment. So the preferred alignment will extend up on Bald Eagle Avenue and will extend along Bald Eagle, Bald Eagle Boulevard over to Hugo Road up to County Road J. Additionally, there is an alternate alignment that's, on, that's located on the map right now, which extends through the White Bear Lake High School property. But this alternate route, route is really only going to be considered if your um, design scenarios cannot be achieved on Bald Eagle Boulevard. Next slide, please. I'd like to transfer uh, or transition over to uh, Mike McGarvey that is gonna talk a little bit more about the project design components. Thanks, Scott. Um, Dan, if you can move back to the, the previous slide, please. So as we've discussed, uh, the project extends from Whitaker at the south all the way up to County Road J. Um, there are really th three distinct segments uh, to the corridor. Uh, the first segment would be that segment of trail along Lincoln Avenue and Bald Eagle Avenue. Uh, in this area, there is through a large portion of the corridor uh, existing sidewalks and or trails. Um, and you have a fair amount of width there to allow for uh, repurposing uh, adjacent boulevard to formalize the trail in this location uh, along the east side of Bald Eagle Avenue, uh, as well as along the east side of Lincoln Avenue. Some of the major considerations in this corridor, uh, this segment include the crossing of Highway 96 at the south end. Uh, that is something where this project, um, the pre-design study is, is looking at uh, formalizing the type of crossing that would occur there, whether it be uh, at grade uh, on street level or potentially in a, a grade separated crossing. Um, continuing north from Kine Road 90, or Highway 96, um, Again, the trail will be on the, the east side of the, is anticipated to be on the east side of the roadway, making connections to uh, various schools, the middle school, uh, the high school, et cetera. Uh, we will have a cr another crossing. Another major element is the crossing of the CP rail line just north of the high school, uh, and then continues north uh, to the intersection with uh, Bald Eagle Boulevard. 
that second segment, the segment that includes Baldigo Boulevard and Taylor Avenue, uh, this is one that is um, a really kind of the challenging part of the project um, along Bald Eagle Avenue, obviously, we, or Bald Eagle Boulevard. Um, we have the proximity of the, the lake, uh, lake homes. We have um, grades, uh, cross slopes there that uh, are being taken into consideration. Um, and so in this area, we are looking at both a one-way and two-way alternatives to the trail development. Uh, when I say that, uh, what we are looking at is trail development alternatives that look at the potential of keeping Bald Eagle Boulevard as it is today as a two-way roadway uh, and building the trail alongside that. Uh, we are also looking at converting um, some or all of this segment of Bald Eagle Boulevard to uh, a one-way section. Uh, so one-way traffic movement and building the trail in essentially the existing uh, roadway section, uh, the other half of the roadway uh, to minimize impact to adjacent properties. So that would be the intent for the segment from uh, Bald Eagle Boulevard, uh, Bald, Eagle, Bald Eagle Boulevard from uh, Bald Eagle Avenue in the west to uh, Taylor Avenue and Hugo Road in the north and east. Um, the third major component of this corridor is the segment along Hugo Road. Um, here again, we have constrained right away um, for a couple different reasons. Again, there's the proximity of lake and, and lake homes, um, but we also have uh, the proximity of the Burlington Northern Railroad uh, along this corridor that makes this again a, a challenging segment to develop. Um, but there are options to develop within the, the existing right of way, uh, creatively looking at options for potentially on road facility or a hybrid facility that would include both uh, on road components and uh, sidewalk or trail. And that continues um, up to the park. Um, and then beyond that, uh, at that point, when we get to the park, the trail is able to. Um, divert out of the road right away or adjacent the road right away and become an independent trail and up to County Road J. So with that, I'm gonna, uh, if we can go ahead one slide, um, as I mentioned the segment along Bald Eagle Avenue, um, currently looking at uh, a 10 foot walker trail along the east side of Bald Eagle Avenue. Uh, there are some considerations here uh, as there are throughout any trail uh, that we're looking at, um, considerations that need to be considered. In this case, there are gonna be uh, driveway uh, intersections that we're gonna have to deal with, uh, minor roadway crossings. As I mentioned, the, the major roadway crossing at Highway 96, uh, the railroad crossing just north of the high school. Uh, and we will see, uh, occasional need for relocating some utilities and working with businesses that uh, do line the corridor um, at the south end of the, that, this segment. But it, we are looking at doing, um, looking for a 10 foot wide trail located on the east side with likely a paved boulevard um, separating the, the roadway from the trail. Next slide, Dan. As we get to Bald Eagle Boulevard, as I said, we're looking at two different alternatives here for making this, uh, for implementing the trail. Uh, the first one that you see here is the idea that uh, the drive lane or the roadway would be converted to a one-way uh, facility and the remaining lane and uh, adjacent grade would be utilized to accommodate the trail. In this case, we are showing, again, a 10 foot wide trail uh, that is based on accepted uh, state and national standards for trail width. Um, and so 10 foot wide trail um, with a boulevard of some sort to separate uh, the drive lane from the, from the trail. Uh, the boulevard width here 
may be able to vary a little bit to accommodate mailboxes and uh, potentially garbage collection as needed. Um, again, when we're converting this to one way, that's one of the things that we have uh, been looking at uh, in addition to traffic volumes and where uh, traffic might be diverted within the neighborhoods. Um, we've evaluated that and determined that um, the impacts to the neighborhood would be uh, relatively minor in terms of changing traffic patterns, uh, considering the, the changes in the school as well and how traffic might access the school, those have all been considered and do feel that a one-way system uh, is possible, um, likely with the one lane of travel in the northbound direction to help facilitate, as I mentioned earlier, uh, trash collection, uh, mail deliveries, et cetera. Uh, and so as you see here, uh, suggesting that the drive lane would be located um, on the lake side of uh, would the drive lane on the would remain that would be on the lake side of the corridor and then that uh, lane that is closest to the adjacent homes or adjacent properties would be converted to the trail segment trail facility next slide Dan in the two-way alternative um, both lanes would be maintained and the trail would be constructed again on the uh, or what I would call as the house side of the of the uh, roadway. Um, in this condition, again, there's potential opportunities for uh, boulevard width uh, to vary a little bit to better accommodate uh, the trail development. Uh, there may be need in this scenario for additional uh, for additional retaining walls in the corridor to accommodate the trail and stay within existing uh, road right away. Uh, but again, here we would maintain the existing two-way travel uh, and construct the trail again on the house side of the uh, existing roadway. Next slide, please. As I mentioned, as we get to Hugo Road um, and that segment, uh, between Taylor Avenue and the Bald Eagle Otter Lakes Regional Park. Um, here we're looking at uh, the potential for both uh, some sort of hybrid facility that would include both uh, on-road bicycle facilities and the potential widening of the road to accommodate pedestrian traffic um, and or a sidewalk uh, in that area. As I mentioned, in this area, this uh, this particular section doesn't necessarily reflect it, but the, the right of way does vary quite a bit through here, um, along with the presence of right of uh, wetlands that are will limit the amount that we can modify uh, the roadway along Hugo uh, Hugo Road, and so for that reason, we are looking at at kind of this hybrid facility of uh, potentially drive lanes and uh, with it kind of a share of the road situation along with sidewalk facilities. And I believe that's the last side. Oh, no, timeline's the next step. So uh, as Scott mentioned, um, the intent of this pre-designed study, uh, pre-engineering study that we are currently working on uh, is to advance the, the preferred alignment that the county identified through their feasibility study uh, and documented in the uh, master plan amendment. Uh, advanced design of that uh, uh, preferred alternative uh, to a 20% uh, level, 20 to 30% complete with the idea that uh, with additional community input, refine that design uh, and uh, prepare the, the project for future funding. Uh, with that kind of pre-design uh, complete, uh, that makes the project much more attractive to uh, grant opportunities. And so uh, we are kind of refining the design, refining the, the right-of-way needs uh, and further evaluation of those crossing situations. Like I mentioned, the rail crossing, uh, the crossing of Highway 96 um, to better position this project for future funding, uh, whether that be state funding 
uh, local regional funding or uh, federal monies for the construction of the trail. And so um, with that, that's, you know, we are needing to design the trail to uh, accepted state and federal standards to again, want to be eligible for those, any sort of funding sources or maximize our opportunity for funding sources. Uh, and the intent is this pre-design process will be completed by the end of this year. And with that, um, maybe I'll turn it back to Dan to talk a little bit more about the remaining input opportunities. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Mike. Um, so following this initial round of engagement, uh, which included some virtual open house meetings here today, um, these, as we had mentioned at the start of the call, this meeting will be recorded and a recording of it will be available on the project website for others to view. It's something as well, if you'd like to step back and review the, the meeting as well, it'll be there. Um, late summer, we're looking for a round two engagement, looking for some additional input on potential trail alignment design concepts. That will include some additional community meetings, as well as some targeted outreach with focus groups or pop-up events. And then um, a third round of engagement planned in the fall of this year to seek additional input on those design concepts as they're refined, um, which will also include some opportunity for input, community meetings, focus groups. Um, so please stay tuned. Uh, the project website is a great place to stay involved and up to date on, on the status of the project. On the project website, there is currently an opportunity for you to share your input. When I get a second here, I will add a link to the wiki map in the chat. This wiki map is really looking for um, community members to share their thoughts on how they would use the trail, what destinations they would like to access along the route, um, where they would be looking to join um, connecting into and out of the trail. So this is a link available on the project website. I will share both of those. Uh, links in the chat here momentarily so you have an opportunity to review and please help us spread the word by sharing um sharing this input opportunities with others others who may be interested and with that i think we will um pause to open up the conversation and see if we have any comments or questions that we would like to address so i will share some links here and then um, advance a slide to provide a little bit more orientation on how you can participate with us today here is a link to the project website. And I will also provide a direct link to that comment map opportunity as well. We have received a, several comments that we will we'll read through, but before opening it up to the q and I did wanna just kind of refresh everyone, had a few folks join us during the call. Um, there's a couple of ways that you're able to participate us, with us tonight, or excuse me, this afternoon. The Q&A box is an option on the bottom of your screen. If you click on that Q&A box, you'll have the option to type in any comments or questions you would like to make. We'll, um, we'll read through those and respond to them in order. Also the opportunity to raise your hand to indicate that you'd like to be acknowledged for up to two minutes of open mic to, to share your thoughts and comments. I'll, um, I'll provide a time update if, if we are coming up on that two minute warning. And I just ask that anyone that shares, please uh, please be respectful with your thoughts and comments. Um, so maybe in, the, in I see one hand has been raised, but I will um, maybe start there and then respond to some of the comments that had come in during the conversation. Um, but I see that Essie has a hand raised. I'm gonna go ahead and hit allow to talk. Please go ahead and, and share your thoughts for up to two minutes. And be able to unmute yourself now. Thanks, Dan. Um, this is Scott Edgar. Just acknowledge that you can hear me. Gotcha, Scott. Thanks. Okay. Um, thank you. So just to, to introduce myself, um, I am a member of uh, the Bicycle Alliance of Minnesota, Lake Links Trail Association and Gateway. I've been a user and advocate with the city in Ramsey County for the Vento Trail since the 1980s. Um, I would still like to encourage, again, the strategic use of the uh, trail line uh, per the master plan for future grants and when the rail line can eventually be abandoned or the rail line uh, allows some access because there are precedents for rails with trails with right away up to 25 feet from the center line and I bike that route and the majority again of that route is within that 25 feet. 
Um, the last things I'd like to say is I have reached out to some businesses. We'd like to, again, uh, encourage, you know, the design to not bypass the downtown business district. That's where people want to get to. So to make it as safe, as convenient as possible for people to get to the business district um, and the school itself. And so my main comment and kind of suggestion is, are there opportunities to go from Bald Eagle Boulevard down Hugo Road um, uh, to Long Avenue um, uh, and get to 8th Street and then go over from 8th Street to the school entrances and Bloom and that gets you to the business district in Cup and Comb. Thanks. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate your comments and attending here today. I'll, um, I'll turn that over to Mike for further comment and response. Like Mike, oh, there you go. There we go. So um, appreciate the comment, Scott. And I would say, uh, I, might, I might defer to Scott Yonke, but uh, the directive that, that we have been given with our scope of work is, is to look at the preferred alignment that is in the, the master plan. Um, we are looking at, you know, considering as a backup, the alternate that would go through the school property. Um, if we're unable to make that work, but it, I think the the intent of, of our effort here is is really driven by uh, the master planning work and feasibility study that the, the county completed a couple of years ago, uh, and kind of moving forward with that alignment. And maybe Scott wants to to talk a little bit more about the the feasibility study and the master plan process and what the county has done to date. Hi everyone, uh, Scott Yonke with Ramsey County Parks again. Uh, Mike, thanks for sharing some information on that and uh, good question, Scott. Um, so um, what I can tell you as far as the, the preferred route was selected in early 2020. So this was really based on uh, an extensive feasibility study that Ramsey County Parks did initiate through 2018 and 2019. 2019. So we looked at uh, several corridors that were going through um, White Bear Lake and White Bear Township uh, back in 2018. We did launch community engagement uh, opportunities at that time and, and really studied many of those corridors. And um, eventually we were we narrowed them down to the preferred alignment right now. So that was based on uh, several comments we received, discussions, and the, the last engagement meeting we had with the public for the feasibility study in 2019, which had a, a, a preferred selection for the preferred route as you see it right now, uh, going up Bald Eagle Avenue, Bald Eagle Boulevard to Taylor, and then over to um, Hugo Road. We did look at some of the route options that you had suggested, and there, there was a lot of difficulties uh, achieving that route, going through um, trying to get down to, to Long Avenue. Um, I know that you also had indicated to uh, the original master plan route, which was based on the the, the 1993 route following the railway corridor. So we, we studied that as well. Uh, we were not able to, to make that one, one work out uh, moving forward. So the master plan amendment and the feasibility study really uh, explored all those opportunities and the master plan amendment, you know, it supersedes now that, that 1993 version. So going forward, the preferred route would be on that uh, going up Bald Eagle um, to the lake and over to, to Hugo Road. Uh, as far as connections to the downtown, uh, you know, one of our goals for this project is providing those connections. Um, but what we would like to do is we would be continuously throughout uh, this project and in the future working with our, our local agencies, uh, White City of White Bear Lake, White Bear Township, to see how 
uh, additional connections or local connections can really be made to the to the Bruce Vento Regional Trail that would provide that direct access to the downtown area. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Scott. And I, I see that um, Scott's hand is raised. I did want to just know, we'll, we'll take a couple of comments. I see that Scott had also shared a few comments in the, the Q&A. So I want to just respond, make sure we get a, a chance to hear from others in the meeting before circling back, Scott, but certainly want to make sure you have an opportunity to respond. So um, briefly, we'll just open it up to the other questions received via the, the Q&A. Um, first of which is, what is the cost to bring the engineering and planning of the 20% level discussed um, during the presentation? Maybe if to go straight to Scott there with that one. Appreciate that, Scott. Uh, yes, I can answer that question. So the the cost for this phase one pre-design uh, to get up to more of a twenty percent uh, design level is approximately two hundred thousand dollars. So this will this will this will get us to a point where we'll be able to. Um, determine what those design, what that design scenario should be like, but they're still going to, we'll need to have additional design beyond that to really get it into a final design. So at, at the end of that, uh, at the end of the final design, we would have a shovel ready project at those, at this time, the costs have not been determined uh, beyond the 20% the right now, but uh, for this project, we've estimated approximately $200,000. Thanks, Scott. Um, we also received a few additional comments related um, to Bald Eagle Boulevard. I'll read those out and share them and then circle back to uh, the comments received from Scott. Limited sight distances on Bald Eagle Boulevard East segment make this alignment dangerous. Even with the one-way option, the limited sight distances make mixing bike and pedestrian traffic dangerous. Um, similarly, a comment, follow-up comment noted, in one-way option on Bald Eagle Boulevard, placing northbound drive lanes on the lakeside would result in residents along the route having to cross the trail to access driveways. So I appreciate those comments. I'm not sure if Mike or Scott wanted yep. to respond as well. Sure, I can respond to that. Uh, so we are continuing to evaluate uh, both the one-way and two-way alternatives. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the segment along Bald Eagle Boulevard is a a challenging uh, segment of, of roadway for developing this, this trail. Um, we are looking, as I mentioned, at uh, traffic volumes. We're looking at trash collection, mail delivery, um, driveway access, uh, looking at impacts to existing retaining walls, stairways, and things of that sort uh, along the corridor. And I would say that the comments that you made are, are good. Um, and something that we need to, we are evaluating that as well, the number of driveways, utility conflicts, et cetera. And um, still the possibility that the, the trail may uh, be on the outside, the lakeside, if we go with that one-way alternative. So um, I think all valid points that have been raised here and, and we are looking at, uh, we are considering those as we are refining the design and, and certainly your input is, is helpful in, in making those decisions along with the rest of the public. So thanks for the comments. Thank you, Mike. Um, we'll respond to a couple additional relevant comments that we received from Scott there, noting that um, should look to have the trail on that lakeside following up with the note that there are many driveways and intersections for those bike trails yep. um, and safety. So a similar comment there received, appreciate that note. Um, Scott, I have a couple other comments we can respond, but I, I see you have your hand raised. so I'll. I'll Go ahead and hit allow to talk and feel free to respond if you um, if you had a follow up question or comment there. You should be able to unmute yourself now. Apologies. Scott, it looks like your hand lowered, so feel free to hit raise again if you'd like to make a follow up comment. Can you hear me now, Dan? I can, thanks. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, so this is Scott Aguirre again. Uh, again, uh, I would encourage the team to look at uh, alternative alignments. It just makes common sense if you're going to use the alternative alignment that uses Hugo Road to continue that down to Long. Um, 
that's the most direct corridor and bicyclists will continue to use that. And I think it also allows, again, when the rail line becomes abandoned, it's easier to get the small section. So if there's any way that you could look at the alternative alignment from Bald Eagle as another option, you know, to the alternative alignment you already have, you already have half of it done there on Yugo Road, just continue it down to Long to 8th, and that would be the most direct route. It would also give um, uh, easy access when the trail line, rail line becomes abandoned to access that through downtown. So I just continue to look at that. And, and again, you know, I appreciate Scott and everybody's comments. I have been advocating for this and I attended all the workshops. So this has been kind of my counsel and recommendation all along. And we, you know, would like to, you know, have this as an asset for downtown. Um, I think if you can, some way to look at that alignment again, from Hugo to Long to 8th to Bloom, um, that would maybe, again, save a lot of costs and save a lot of issues with uh, um, one-way issues up around Bald Eagle. Thank you. Appreciate those follow-ups, comments, Scott. And just to note, I had, um, while you were chatting there, shared the, the comments you had provided um, related to that in the chat during the presentation. So um, not sure if Scott or Mike have any follow-up. Otherwise, we did receive one additional question in the, the chat as well. Um, hey, Dan, this is Scott here. Um, I can follow up with, uh, with Scott's question uh, regarding the alternative alignment to, to look at Long App, down the Long Avenue. Um, that was actually part of the process uh, through our feasibility study. So we, we did look at how we could effectively achieve a connection to, to get to Long Avenue and then extend north to, to Hugo Road on that. Um, that that alignment route is is not being considered anymore. Uh, that was um, removed uh, as part of that feasibility study process, just with difficulty of actually getting to Long Avenue from from Bald Eagle Boulevard. So that at this point, uh, the the alignments that are being moved forward is the preferred avenue along uh, Bald Eagle Avenue following Bald Eagle Boulevard to Taylor to Hugo. And then we do have that one alternate alignment going through the White Bear School, the White Bear Lake High School property. Um, if for some reason there is not design scenarios that cannot be achieved for the Bald Eagle Boulevard. So I just wanted to let you know, Scott, that at this point we're, we're not moving forward with uh, preferred uh, restudying that Long Avenue corridor. Thanks, Scott. And uh, this is probably a question received in the Q&A that will go right back to you, Scott. Um, asking about the process that was, was taken to determine those preferred alternatives and what was the public notification or engagement process um, during that time. And I can maybe jump back to our timeline as well to help guide some of that discussion. Um, uh, great question. I'd be happy to, to try and answer that question as well. So the, the timeline for when the feasibility study uh, occurred, we actually started our feasibility study in uh, 2017, but we really launched that project in, in 2018 as, as one of those three projects that I had spoke earlier to in, uh, in, in the presentation study where we really we're looking at several corridors uh, throughout that process. And we looked at several corridors, uh, both on the um, east side of Highway 61, west side of Highway 61. Uh, we had two public uh, engagement meetings in uh, uh, 2018. Those were uh, notified through um, uh, website, social media. I believe there uh, may have also been um, a press release on that as well. Uh, and then additionally, we had uh, an, another follow-up meeting within 2019 to go through some of those design options. And as a result of the, the early meetings in 2018, we did take a step back as a result of public comment we did here to really look at that downtown area again to exhaust all of our options to see if we can make that work. 
And uh, unfortunately, through that uh, year long process, we, we were not able to make that, that downtown location work on the original corridor or uh, closely adjacent to that corridor. So that was really the, the specific time frame for the, the feasibility study. You know, we had started it in uh, mid 2017, but really launched it in 2018. And then we finalized it uh, uh, the end of uh, 2019 as we selected our preferred route in uh, early 2020. Thanks, Thank Scott. You. That um, wraps up. We just had one more comment come in here that I'll read, but that just so we're, um, Everyone on the call is aware that wrapped up the questions that we had received to date. We have a few minutes remaining here in our scheduled meeting time. If there's any additional comments or questions, please feel free to share those. Um, looks like Scott had followed up to note, I believe the alternative route was never shared with public sessions. The access to Bald Eagle from and through the school is no major difference than accessing 4th, Bloom, 8th to Long and Hugo Road. Appreciate that comment there, Scott, um, would maybe look to Scott Yonke for a response. Yeah, I'd be happy to try answer that question. And uh, another great question. Thanks for um, uh, for sharing that with us. And uh, yes, the, the alternative route was shared. So in the, the 2019 meeting, uh, we did present um, three different route options at, at that time. So there was, and that has been listed on our project page for the last uh, or last year, year and a half, in in regards to um, the those route options. So the the first route option one was going up uh, Bald Eagle. We had a, a route two option which went through the White Bear High School property to Division Street, which then would take Park over to Hugo. And then we had a route option three that actually went down to get to Long Avenue. And as part of the, the public comments we had heard as well as the uh, surveys and that, that we had achieved back from that meeting, uh, there really was a, pref uh, a preferred selection for that, uh, the alternate route as it stands today, going through, uh, going up Bald Eagle and extending along the lake. So the, the, the route was shared. Um, there was uh, engagement on that. Uh, and then obviously that was an outcome of the engagement we received. And just a quick follow-up there, Scott, the, the school route was also part of that, was kind of the follow-up question that was, was shared by Scott in your response. Uh, yes, the, the school route was also part of that November 19, uh, 19th meeting. Which, so there is a graphic on our website that the project page that shows that whole process that we had through the feasibility study, the graphics that were presented, as well as the route options of where they started to how they were narrowed down um, at, at that point in time. Appreciate that follow-up response there. Um, I will advance a few slides to make sure that we share our contact information uh, with everyone on the call today as we work to um, make sure we provide everyone with an opportunity to share their comments or questions. We'll plan to um, wrap up the meeting by 1230, but we have a, just a few minutes remaining. If there are any other ideas to share, please feel free. And as you can see on the screen here, here is the, the project website and the contact information for, for Scott Yonke. And I would just reiterate, Dan, if, um, you know, with the understanding that the intent of this meeting is, is really to gather public input on the, the development of the trail on the preferred alignment, uh, if anyone has any additional comments related to uh, comments, suggestions, questions related to uh, the segments along Bald Eagle Avenue, Bald Eagle Boulevard, or Hugo Road, um, We'd really look forward to, to hearing your thoughts and, and help us design the right facility uh, along the corridor. So thank you. 
appreciate that note as well. Um, and would continue to ask for, for anyone on the calls um, support here today, helping us to continue to spread the word that Wikimap link and the project website are, um, are great resources to help us um, get as many people involved and to share as many thoughts as we can. So please, please do help us and let others who may be interested know about those input opportunities. I haven't seen any additional questions coming in here. Maybe we'll pause for just another 30 seconds to make sure that we connected with everyone who is interested today uh, before wrapping up the meeting. This is Scott Yonke with Ramsey County Parks again. I just wanted to say thank you for everyone that attended the meeting today. There is another opportunity uh, tonight uh, uh, to, to attend as well. We'll be presenting um, the same information as you see today, but more importantly, I just wanted to say thank you. There was a lot of great questions that were that that were uh, asked as far as the towards this project. And if there is any additional questions, feel free to to try to reach out. Uh, again, thank you. Excellent. And with that, we will look to wrap up the meeting. Please note that you should receive an optional demographic survey, um, exit survey. Please help us uh, if you're willing and comfortable, share a few demographic un, um, questions to help us better understand who we reach today. And with that, we will look to conclude the meeting. Have a good afternoon and thank you for joining us.